Soprano has kind of some quirky things that, that go on with it. I know that um, one thing that I notice a lot is going across the break is a little tough. It's, it's that way with any saxophone, but when you're going, there's that kind of bump. Yeah. And every soprano is different. It's like, that D is, that D is a, is a bad note on any saxophone though. Yeah. Now that, that E sounds like a little bit uh, distant to me. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not as free as a D. You know? Right, it is. It has, it also seems like coming into it, it's a little bit of a flatter yeah. note than the D. So, I mean, these are the kind of things that we're dealing with constantly with all our instruments. They're not. There's no perfect instrument. There, there's going to be intonation problems. There's going to be technical well, all problems. All saxophones are out of tune. Right. You know, you have to play them in tune. You play them with your ears. You don't play them with a mouthpiece or anything like that. Right. You know, but I'm I'm a great believer in in this C. Mm -hmm. That's the, the middle. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's a much better note, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, when I when I when I teach, I try to get them to use this, that that C because mm -hmm. none of them ever do. You know, they've just spent four years playing in high school bands, <laughs> and they don't need know how. You know. I thought that was a pretty obvious uh, alternative. And and the bisky mm -hmm. is another one, you know. Mm -hmm. When you know, when you're playing in, in, you know, you can hold the C sharp down, mm -hmm. and and play all over the C sharp key mm -hmm. with the C sharp down. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a great believer so, in stuff like that. Yeah, I, I am too, and I love alternate fingerings, and for other reasons too. Like like you said, the C has a different sound. For me, the side C always feels a little brighter, yeah. but if you can contain the brightness, it, it sings a lot more. It sings a lot. Yeah. You yeah, gotta, yeah. But then you again, you've got to be careful not to put too much air in it, because you right. can put a lot of air in it. Mm -hmm. You have that instinctive you know, ability to just to, to color the sound and make it how you want it. A lot of people don't do that, and that's what you have to do with the soprano. Also with the side C, what it does also, see there's a lot of places on the horn where you can't bend from one note to another, like, like going from B to C. You know, we, you know, the saxophone, playing an instrument is an, is a, is a, uh, gives us an opportunity to express something. And so we want the horn to, to give us these different ways of being able to express something. And phrasing is very important. If yeah. you're going from a B to a C, and you use that normal fingering, you can't bend into the C from the B. So if you use the side C, Right? Yeah, it gives yeah. you that other thing that you yeah. can do. And it's the same with the F sharp. Yeah. If you go, if you use a standard F sharp, you're kind of limited to it bumping over to the next right, note. Yeah. But if you'd use a side F sharp, you can actually use it, yeah. open it up slowly, and get into the note. And also, you mentioned the E flat key, you know. That's it's something you told me a long time ago. This, you know, this this E flat key is something that the flute player <laughs> always used. But you told me that you use it on a saxophone a lot. All the time. Danny Bank told me that. Danny Bank said, "Play it like a flute." So, so, what? It, how, how does it affect the sound for you? It makes the sound a little, a little just a little steadier and a little brighter. Mm -hmm. Like well, when you get close to it, like with the E, it's going to make it a, 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 yeah. obviously a little sharper in pitch. But like if you go start to go, up. you have to be careful to, to let it go. And you know. mm -hmm. Yeah, you see how it opens up that low E. Yeah. yeah. I think because my horn, talk about quirky, is very flat down low. If I use that E flat, it gives yeah. me the opportunity to fill out the note a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. I, 
want to I want to have the ability to lip a little down to, to open up the sound rather than trying to lip up. Right. Because every time you lip up, you pinch off the sound. Yeah. Yeah. There's also uh, playing up high on the soprano is difficult, and I think people shy away from it, or they or they just try to try to you know strong strong arm the soprano into doing something by like. <laughs> You know, getting that kind of whiny sound. Yeah. And I remember being in a position once where uh, I had to play a high E, like kind of pianissimo. It was like, like that. Yeah. But I was having a lot of trouble playing the E really quiet. So someone said, hey, there's an alternate E fingering, high yeah. E fingering on the soprano, which when you finger it like that, you will never not play the note. It's, it's guaranteed. And it's, it's basically an F sharp, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, a G sharp with the side D key put on. So you get oh, the, I see. the G sharp, octave key, side D. It, it, it won't do anything else but play the E. Yeah. As soon as Eric gets into the sax, it's gonna play that. Yeah. And I actually add the, the F sharp, the, uh, just to open up the sound a little bit. Yeah. Right? The G sharp. Never, never. You ever tried that, right? G sharp as well? Yeah, and then the side D, yeah. Well, that, I don't that's know, you don't do it right. That's too many. <laughs> too much to think about. Yeah. I got in the habit of doing that all the time. Yeah. And, and I never go up there. <laughs> Man, pl play a little body and soul on the soprano. Coleman Hawkins. See, I mean, this instrument can be sweet and beautiful yeah. and dark and big. Yeah. You just have to conceptualize it. Yeah. You have to yeah. believe in it like that. That's beautiful. Yeah. I like it. Playing that register, you know? Mm -hmm. It's nice. And